Welcome to the Vow Studio for August 29th, 2017. There's an exciting development here. Some software came out and gives us some new fit capabilities here using our Digilent Analog Discovery 2 module. I'm going to hop right over to this press release. This is for their software package called Waveforms. 3.6.8 came out today. And if you read through here, there's a lot of improved functionality on various tools, various you know, tools in here. What I'm excited about is the one down here at the bottom. There is a new tool in the workbench. It is an impedance analyzer. It uses a technique where you have a function generator connected up to your, uh, your device under test. In this case, they're calling it load. And you use two scope probes and you sim simultaneously sample um, you know, the, the analog voltage out on these scope which is what the Analog Discovery 2 does. And then based on a known, res a known value in the circuit, namely this resistor, you can look at the voltage and phase relationship between these two traces and determine characteristics about the load. There's two particular technologies, uh, te topologies here. You can put the load in between this, this, the uh, scope probes or down here you can do a resistor first where you sense the resistor. We're doing this, this one here. We'll show you that in just a minute. And you can do on the, um, well, let's just hop in and show you. Okay, so here's waveforms. If you look down here under on the left-hand column, you got the impedance analyzer. And it's showing you a bunch of stuff. What I have hooked up right now, if you look at this, let's go ahead and hop over to the actual test setup here. I have the analog discovery two up here and I had kind of wired through here. This is my, my uh, prototyping board and I got a pinto up here. This isn't part of the circuit. It's just left over there. But this part here, my, um, my known resistance is a 10 K resistor here. And my device under test currently is a one K resistor over here on our uh, screen. We can set the start and stop frequency. We can set the amplitude. And here's that resistor value, and we're also uh, resistor first. We're doing 50 samples across this frequency range. And so, uh, an interesting thing here is because we're using the function generator out of the analog discovery, we can set the offset. And why we would like to do that is that allows us to actually apply a bias uh, current to our device under test, which will affect the impedance if we're looking at uh, inductors or transformers. Let's do a single run here to see what it picks out for that 1K resistor. And you can see that our amplitude here, when we are on ohms, we get to choose from amplitude, the, the actual resistance part of the signal and the reactance part. So this is just straight uh, uh, impedance. If you want to look at the reactance part, it looks pretty stationary. The impedance the actual um, reactance part is going to have some kind of characteristics because of the way that I'm wired up. You're going to get a little of, of reactance, but in, in magnitude, a 1K resistor to a 0.1 ohm resistor doesn't really affect the overall impedance curve at all. All right, so our setup is working fine. If you find out that you're getting errors, caught, then you'll see on the screen It'll say something like resistor too high, resistor too low. You need to change this value of this resistor. The other thing you need to look at, I'll just briefly show you this. If you click on the, uh, the gear here, you, have to, you can set the attenuation of, of the uh, scope probes that you have. If you're using a 10x probe, then you need to set that to 10x. Otherwise, the uh, calculations are going to be off by a factor of 10 or 100. All right, here's a, uh, this is a output transformer that's used in reverb circuits. I'll show you that over here. This is the Hammond data sheet for it. It's a 1750. This is used in a lot of Fender, um, Fender reverbs. Uh, it's designed to run an 8 ohm load and present 22k, uh, 22.8, about 23k impedance to the plate. The whole point of our 
excitement is we are going to get to look at what the impedance looks like reflected through a transformer onto the plate. That's what our goal is right now. So I'm going to connect up to the primary side of this. And let's just look at this as an inductor. We didn't want to connect it up and use it as a transformer. We're just purely connected across the primary. Now let's go ahead and run a single trace here. We're going to bring up a new tab here, Henry. We'll look at the impedance value of it. Let's say we wanted to use this in a power supply and we want to find out what kind of inductor it would be in a power supply. So if we click on this guy over here, we will get off and we're going to be at 60 hertz here in the United States. If we use it at 60 hertz, it's a 26 Henry inductor. Now, is that reasonable? No, not really. Because it doesn't have any uh, DC bias current pumped through it. Well, you can use a transformer for an inductor, but you need to apply a DC bias. Like I said, we could potentially apply a DC bias with this offset, but I'm not prepared today to demo that. We're most interested in is what happens when we add a uh, a load to this, and this is this is actually reflecting a um, a load back into the plate circuit on of the, in this case a single ended amplifier. So I have an eight ohm uh, power resistor here. And I'm connecting it across the secondary. Let's go ahead and do a, a run again. We don't want Henry's on anymore. We're only interested in what the impedance looks like. So here's the impedance. Okay, so here we go. This value here ends up being around 20, around 20K, 24K. You see it increases here. There's going to be a natural resonance out here based on uh, on uh, the uh, capacitance in the circuit. So this is this ultimately will be the inductance and the capacitance forming a Q circuit. What's important to see is that there's a little bit of a flat a flat uh, you know flat here down to about 100 hertz. But what you're really seeing is that down at 100 hertz it is a 12K. Um, a 12k load to the plate. Now, most reverb circuits don't uh, actually reverb uh, the low frequency, so they'll put a they'll put a, a high pass filter on the circuit. If you look at those, and they're only really interested in some some higher frequencies of themselves, not anything that's low. So, as an output transformer, this would probably work pretty well. But here's the kicker. We're, we need to look at it from a speaker's perspective. So I have a speaker here. The speaker is actually a not, not an 8 ohm speaker, so it's not very good. Not a very good example of what we need here. We need this guy. So I have an, this looks like an old 10-inch uh, guy. I don't, I don't know anything about this. I only looked at the impedance of it. Or the resistance of it. So let's just go ahead and do that. Since we have an impedance analyzer, let's look at what this speaker looks like from an impedance perspective. We'll hook that guy up. We're not shorted down there. Go ahead and make a run here and look at the impedance of this speaker. All right, now it's telling us two errors. We've got resistor too low down here, and we've got resistor too high up here. So chances are these particular readings where there's errors, uh, the, it's not giving you a result. So this is where you need to kind of screw around with, um, screw around. You need to alter the, the, the series resistor. So I'm going to take that uh, 1K resistor and kind of stick it right across the 10K. It's not too accurate here, but. If we were to make this 1K, let's go ahead and take another run here. See what happens. Okay, that's much better. And if we were to look at this impedance, uh, the actual resistance here of these two combined, it's not going to be 1K. It's going to be 1K in, in parallel with 10K. So it's something like 90, 900. 
It turns out under his compensation, you can come down here and change what these values are. Um, so let's say that we know that it's 930 ohms. Okay, you can change it. You can't change the label, the pop-up the, uh, pop label, but you can change the value that it uses for the calculation. So it's actually running the the, uh, the the whole response there. So this is the resonance of this particular speaker. This is a natural resonance at uh, what 108 uh, hertz, and it zooms up to 28k. And then down here we're right around, you know, 13 to 15. So my guess is this would be labeled as a 16 ohm speaker. That's what I believe it is. All right, let's take that and use, let's use this in our, let's use this for our load here on our power transformer. Now if I had an eight ohm speaker, wait, I have another one. Let me look at this, hold on. All right, here's another speaker. I probably should have probably should have done this before. All right, here's another one. Let's go ahead and check this one out. This is off something. I was just sitting here in the lab. Let's run this one. Maybe this is closer to eight. Oh, got to put my resistor back in. Um, No, something happened. Oh, come on. Hmm. Well, it's a speaker, but it's got a really high impedance. Let's look at this for our meter. This thing says it's three ohms. All right, let's get down to this. Let's get serious here. Great. Oh, all right. We're on 1K because I've got that 1K resistor in there. We'll do a run here. And we're still off. Well, I guess I don't know what I'm doing. We're off by a factor of a thousand for some reason. I don't know why. That is a 1K, right? I picked up the right resistor. Something else is going on here with this. That's weird. Got the one K in there. It's off. It's odd. Do I have a compensation right for the one? Oh, it's 1930K. Doggone it. <laughs> okay. Shoot, it wants a K value. All 
All right. That's good to know. Except it's still off. I'll get there. Those astute watchers. We are on the 1K setting. Ay, ay, ay. It's called lack of prep here. All right, here we go. That's good. Now we're good. Oh, that's four. Shoot. We don't have an 8-ohm speaker here. All right, let's keep going. Well, it'll be interesting to, to look at what's happening here. We're going to click up the primary back up here to our output transformer. And we're going to shove these in here and hope it works. And we're going to go back over here to the 10K resistor. Okay, this is pretty good. Uh, remember with the 8 ohm resistor, the load, uh, the, the load in, in the mid band here we were seeing was about 23K. But now since we're using a 4 ohm resistor, you know, we're, we're half of that. Probably a little less than that. But we have this peak in here now. This peak is due to the, um, the natural resonance of the speaker. But this is the actual load that the, um, the, output, trans the output tube is going to actually see. So this is a very interesting situation. Let me go back over to this camera. Well. It, this was just uh, goofing around. I know I'm going to use this a lot more and I'll give you a lot more in-depth uh, um, video here as, as more content comes up and I, I learn more about this. Uh, the, the point of all this tonight was um, when, you, when you do your biasing, you end up picking a fixed load line. And the fixed load line is based on uh, the turns ratio of your output transformer and that fixed load line you actually put on the um, uh, the plate characteristics to you know set your bias point well that impedance is what we can see here it is an impedance at a particular frequency but that the slope of that of your load line you see if <laughs> whatever the slope of your load line is going to change for uh over the frequency and you're also going to have peaks in it as well so if you're sitting at the natural resonance of the speaker your impedance goes up almost a factor of about three which is which will change your slope by a factor of three so uh now what how, how do we do design based on that uh i don't know quite yet but I'll figure it out and let you know. All right, thanks for watching. This is the Valve Studio for August 29, 2017.